Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So I've decided to talk about values and how to find out what you value in life. And the reason I've decided to talk about this is because I actually want to talk about regret and living without regret. And I can't do that until you understand about your own values. So today I decided I was going to speak about this so that next week, hopefully, if you're interested, you can tune in to Living Without Regrets and we'll have something to work on that you'll then be able to use in your life. So we all have different values in life and quite often we judge people and we think that they should have the same values we have. But life would be incredibly boring if that was the case and we'd all want to live in the same place and go to the same school and eat the same food and do the same exercise. We'd be like little mini robots. And funnily enough, I had a discussion with my sister-in-law, God, months, maybe even a year ago, more than a year ago, about values. Because her and my brother have chosen to live in the centre of town and they want to be close to everything. They're very sociable people and their life is very different to mine. And at the time when I was living, this was when I was living in Botswana, I chose to live about 15 minutes outside of the centre of town um, in the countryside because I value space and peace and quiet and nature and various other things. And as I was saying this, my sister-in-law <laughs> said to me that she valued the same things I did. And so I tried to explain to her that actually she might value them, but she doesn't value them as highly as I value them. She values other things more highly because of the choices she's made in life. And we can see what we value most because of where we are in life. She values connections and interaction and people and things like that far more highly than I do because I value peace and quiet and tranquility more. And there's no right and wrong of it. I'm not saying she's wrong for valuing what she values. I'm not saying I'm right for valuing what I value. They're just different values. And we base the choices we make on life based on our values. But until we know ourselves really well, we can sometimes get quite muddled up and sometimes make choices based on what we think we should like or things we think we should value because of the way that society is constructed and helps us or tries to get us to think about what we should be thinking, if that makes any sense at all. Part of becoming more conscious and more self-aware is being able to see who you truly are and what is important to you. And one of the ways to do that is to get a piece of paper and you can do this on your own if you want to. And I did it, oh God, years ago now. And I was quite surprised by some of the things that came out as the most important things in my life. And you'll be able to see what you value by the choices you make in these categories. First of all, write down what you spend your money on. And this is not about what you spend your money on in regards to survival. So it's not about like the weekly shop that you do or the um, necessities that you have to buy. But it's that what do you spend your money on when you don't have to spend money? So for instance, do you spend it on, and because I've been talking about my sister-in-law and myself, those things are coming to the forefront. But for instance, her money, um, a lot of it is spent on socialising and um, spending time with people. Whereas I spend most of my money, I suppose, on learning things <laughs> and on books and, and on my children. Um, and, and she spends a lot of money on her children as well. So in case she watches this, I'm not trying to say that I'm, I'm you know, more focused on my children than she is. It's just what's coming to my mind at this moment. You might find that you spend your money on, on exercise things or you might find you spend your money on gadgets and electronics. And there's no right or wrong. It's just understanding what you value in your life. And to do that, you've got to be really honest. So write down at least five things that you spend your money on out of choice, not out of necessity. Then the next section is what you spend your time on. So this is not your time that you need to work or do the things you need to do like cleaning and shopping and whatever else. This is your free time. The time that you have available, that precious free time that you have, what do you spend that doing? For me, I tend to spend it out in nature. I do have some really wonderful friends that I choose to connect with, but I'm very choosy about who I spend my time with. It has to be uplifting and expanding for me. So 
I suppose as a hidden agenda with what I spend my money on is uh, what I spend my time on, sorry, is about spending time growing as a person because the people that I choose to spend my time with challenge me and help me to grow as a person. So that's kind of underwritten into the connections that I make. I also spend time on physical activity. Keeping healthy is very important to me. It's um, high value that I have in my life. Um, and that's something that I choose to spend my free time on. So have a look and write down again a minimum of five things that you spend your free time on. The next thing to look at is what do you read? So have a look in, around your bed. Um, what books do you have? Um, if you go online or if you go onto social media, what what topics, what things interest you? Do you choose to read? Do you choose to fill yourself full of? Um, what programmes do you watch on TV? And have a look to see a theme that runs through it. And I've noticed that as I've got older, the things that I tend to spend my time focusing on have changed. So when I was younger, when I first had my kids, I would go into a bookshop and I would be buying books on gardening, on cooking, um, on childcare, on various things like that because that was particularly important and I valued those things at that point in my life. Whereas now, my selection would be very different. So you need to look at where you are now to decide on what your current values are. So you need to look at what you value now. The next section we're going to look at is what do you talk about? What topics interest you? When you meet up with friends or colleagues or people in general, what conversations do you engage with that really get you excited and inspired and, you know, wanting to participate in? Because again, that is something that you value, that you've learnt about, that you care about, that you're passionate about. So make a list of, again, between five or more things that you enjoy having conversations with other people about. And then finally, um, ask yourself, what do you spend your time thinking about? So when you're driving along, when you are walking or exercising, or when you're cleaning the house, what is your mind turning over? What do you spend your time pondering and thinking about? Again, where your focus is are the things that you value in life. So I'm just going to run through those categories again, all of which you need to try and find between five or more things that you value or that you're focusing on in those areas. It's where do you spend your spare money? Where do you, what do you do with your spare time? What do you read and sort of feed yourself with knowledge of? Um, what conversations do you have with your friends or colleagues? Or what topics interest you? And finally, what do you spend your time thinking of, pondering about, questioning, exploring? And when you answer all of those, have a look through the answers that you give and pull out the ones that are common thread through all of them. And you should end up between three, maybe four different things that you can then say are the things that you value most in your life. And they might change from time to time. I mean, as I said, when I was younger and my kids were young, my focus was very different to what it is now. And I'm actually at a stage where my eldest son will be leaving home soon. Um, and I'm sure that my value system will change enormously when that happens, because my kids have been one of my greatest things that I valued for many, many years. Um, it doesn't mean I won't value them, but I'm not going to be there on a day to day basis um, thinking about who I'm being around them and trying to bring them up in the way that I want them to bring up to be brought up in. They will have hopefully flown the nest and be supporting themselves and living their own lives. So this is something that you might want to repeat from time to time so that you can assess what's changed or shifted in your life and how that's changed or shifted your values. And as I said, I'm sharing this with you today because next week I want to talk about living without regrets and hopefully the two will knit nicely into each other and you'll be able to use what I'm going to share next week more effectively. Um, if you want to know more about my online courses or the coaching that I do, the links to that will be down below in the show notes. And um, if you've enjoyed this and you don't want to miss out, make sure you subscribe and like them as well. So much love from me to you and have a fabulous week. Bye bye.